Hello, this is H.D. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Disgaea! Let's head on to, to start episode 3 and rob that guy's place. The rich guy's place. Anyway, if you uh, talk to her, she'll tell you about the uh, the demon that we're going to rob. Oh, nuts. Yeah, what do we do now? Oh, well, obviously. Where's the gate key? Fezzik, tear his arms off. Er, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So what's the condition for this one? Oh, well, what do you mean by that? What do you mean leveling up an item? So we gotta get an item up to level 10 or more in order to go to that new dun- or new- yeah, dungeon or whatever you want to call it. So we gotta go through the item world in order to level up weapons or equipment or whatever. I'll talk more about that later. It's uh, rather complicated. So we'll get to that soon enough. And we get Mr. Jensi's exit. Really, game? Well, once you've seen Dr. Aegon, something like that doesn't even phase you anymore. Uh, you never tap Dr. Aegon. Oh, okay, well, that sounds pretty handy, but before heading into the item world, I have some special preparations that I've made off-screen there. Uh, one thing that I want to do is I want to bring Flan up to speed. So, uh, one thing that I did was I uh, passed the first, well, a couple promotion exams for her with uh, my scout's gun. So I just gave that to her temporarily, equipped her with a whole bunch of emblems, and she was able to pass the first two exams really easily. Uh, also, I've distributed my emblems here, like that, and I've also given Flan all of my uh, orbs here because, well, she's going to be my pure mage for a while there, so that'll really help her out with her MP there. So, uh, now what I want to do is teach some spells to Flan so that way she has some offensive potential. Uh, the way you do it is you create some pupils for her. Just like uh, Laharl created uh, the scout, brawler, and warrior there. Uh, let's see here. So let's take a look at... Yeah, you see I got the mana there. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I took those promotion exams with the gun. So that way she could kill some enemies and get the mana to create some job classes. So as you can see, I've already created a red mage, a blue mage, and a cleric there. So, and I've already, I already did that off screen, but I want to show you how I did it on screen here. So, uh, there's one more mage that I still want to create. That is the green mage. I've already got red, blue, and a female cleric, although it doesn't matter what gender they are. Uh, I'm guessing that's a male cleric? I can't tell. But anyway, game. There we go. I want to create a green mage, and this is how you want to create all of them. Good for nothing there. So that way I can learn the uh, spells from her. It doesn't matter what their capability is. And we got our green mage there. And for all of them, drop their attack by five because they're never going to use that. So I'm not really worried about it. And voila, we've got our green mage there. So let's have her teach some spells to Flan there. Yeah, I know that makes a whole lot of sense. The pupil teaching spells to the mentor, but uh, never mind that. One of the reasons why I'm trying to teach all these spells to Flan only is because that way I have one character who can take care of all of my magical needs instead of having to equip multiple mages with expensive equipment. So, and let's see. Okay, so we've got Flan there. So, let's see. I'm looking for someone who's weak to win. Aw, oh, come on! There's not one enemy here who's weak to win. Well, anyway... Okay, so here's how you teach a spell to someone. You see here? There's all the spells she's got. I've already taught Fire, Ice, and Heal from the Red Mage, Blue Mage, and Cleric, respectively, there. So in order to teach a spell, you just take a pupil of that character and have them adjacent to the character, or the mentor, that you want to teach the spell to. And voila! Now we have access to win, which is the Green Mage spell. So you select it. You select the spell, you select the area of effect, or AOE, in this case just one enemy, and you select your target there. So you can hit from range, not too much for now, but uh, we'll see what we can do with that. 
So now, uh, in order to learn a spell, you have to cast it a few times. Each time you use it, you'll gain a little experience for the spell. Like, see, the spell is gone because I removed my uh, green mage from the battlefield so that way she would not get killed. So let's see. Okay, let's try the wind spell on you. I can't believe there's not one enemy on the battlefield weak to wind. But whatever, we seem to be doing pretty well so far. Another reason why I like Flan better than regular mages is because Flan's aptitudes, see that she has 100% on all aptitudes, whereas ordinary mages have really bad aptitudes in HP and defense there. They're kind of glass cannons there. So uh, that's why I like using Flan to take care of all my spell casting needs. So let's see. Oh, right, I need the main there. Whoops. Okay, so you see where it says 40 experience? To gain one level, I need 50 experience. So one more ought to do. Okay, there we go. And let's start bringing out my other characters now and start wiping these guys out. Because now, if you uh, take a look at Flan, she has permanently learned the wind spell. So now we don't need the green mage next to her in order to take care of all that stuff. Excuse me. So yeah, I, uh, like I said, I already taught all the spells that I wanted to to Flan uh, off screen there. And by the way, uh, when you uh, cast spells, it increases not only the spell level, but it also increases your uh, staff mastery or your weapon skill with stabs. And uh, increasing spell levels and increasing your staff mastery uh, has a few effects, actually, that are really nice. It can increase the range of your spells up to seven. It is obscene in this game. Uh, it also increases the AoEs that you can use when you cast a spell, not just one enemy at a time. So you'll see that when we get further into the game. And uh, it also increases the base power of those spells. So they can get stronger than even higher tier spells. Like, let's see, we got, uh, okay, we got fire. Uh, there's also mega fire, uh, giga fire, omega fire, and terra fire. And each one is subsequently stronger, but it's really not that much stronger than the previous ones. So I just recommend sticking with the uh, lower level ones, or the most basic spells for now, and just level those up like mad. That's the way I look at it. And the cheaper, or the weaker spells are a lot cheaper, too. So that's how I'm going to be doing that. So now we need to... Uh, let me just talk to her one more time there. So yeah, so now we need to get an item up to level 10 and be able to equip that on Laharl. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into the item world to do that then. So I've already removed the Imperial Seal. Uh, we might want to bring the exit there. And just in case I screw up, I'm going to make a save file here. Or a backup save file. I, I like making a lot of backup save files. Just in case I want to go back a chapter in case I really screwed something up. So, okay, so this is the lady you talk to. You can now go into the item world. Uh, you cannot use the item world in chapters one or two. You can't do that until chapter three there. Uh, let's see, yeah, item world is uh, pretty random. It's basically a random dungeon, kind of like the uh, ancient cave in Lufia 2. And uh, yeah, you can leave right in the middle of it. Uh, so I'll explain more details about how it works. Uh, if you have any questions for me, let me know. So let's go into the item world and select the Imperial Seal. If for some reason I don't get the random floor that I want, I'll just uh, reload my save file there. Okay, we are in the item world. Essentially a randomly generated battlefield with usually a lot of geo symbols and stuff. Uh, so as a result, because you have a lot of geo symbols, you can create a massive geo chain and get a really good bonus boost. So uh, let's see what we got here. We got some experience, some money. So we got some pretty good stuff there. So okay, we'll use this one. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you how to make money in the item world here. So let me see how many geo symbols we got. We got four. So yeah, that ought to be enough. Okay, so first thing we want to do is well actually kill the enemies. 
So let's see what we got here. Let's have my brawler take that guy out. Let's just uh, be careful there. There we go. And let's see. Let's have Flan uh, take out that zombie there. It's weak to ice. Let's use that. Hmm. That wasn't enough. Well, your resistance isn't that high. Hmm. That's strange. Well, anyway. Uh, Etna, if you would do the honors. So basically, what I was looking for in the bonus list there is a little bit of experience, like two or three things on the bonus list, and the rest of it, money, and other really good stuff that I want. The idea that I want to do is I want to actually uh, kill most of the enemies on the battlefield, and then... Uh, set off a massive geo chain to uh, get all those rewards there. So this one will take a little while, but uh, we can handle it. Let's see, you're not weak to much of anything, but uh, triburst might work. Ha! There you go. Let's see what we got here. We got some monsters there. I think I can take them. Here I come. Watch out for the imps. Although the monsters are randomly generated too, but the levels of the enemies are dependent on the power of the item. That's why you had that, uh, the gatekeeper, uh, telling you to, uh, watch out for, uh, really high level monsters and such. You want to kind of spread out your party members a bit too, so that way you don't get hit by AoEs or things like that. And of course, always watch out for the Geo symbols there. Uh, okay, I think we're in pretty good shape now. The goal in the uh, item world is essentially to either kill all the enemies or get to the exit panel. Like you saw, we started on the base panel there. Oh, thanks for lining up single file. Here I come. Uh, let me show you the uh, exit panel there real quick. Let's see. Come on. There we go. Yeah, you see there's the exit panel, and we have a gatekeeper on top of it. So you're going to have to deal with him in order to get through to the exit. So we'll get to that soon enough. But uh, first things first, let's see. You are weak to ice. So let's do that. You can take out that guy. There we go. One more. Uh, let's see. Let's have Flan deal with that guy. Fire! There we go. Okay, I think that's all the enemies. So now what I want to do is I want to check out the battlefield and try to set up these geo symbols so that way they'll chain one into the other into the other until we'll get a massive geo chain and max out the bonus gauge, hopefully, or get close to it. It's not a huge battlefield, but well, just give me a moment and I'll take care of that and be right back. Okay, I think I've got everything all set and ready to go. So I've moved around the geo symbols a little bit here. So we're going to start with this one. This will make the blue ones turn green once I destroy that one. Then, so the blue ones will turn green. That'll destroy this geo symbol. Then the green ones will turn red. Then that'll destroy this geo symbol because it's on green. So the red ones will turn blue. And then... The red one, that'll destroy this one, and you want to destroy the null symbol last, and that'll destroy all the geo panels and clear the entire battlefield there. And hopefully, that'll create such a massive geo chain that it will max out the bonus gauge there. One thing for the experience... Oops, wrong one. Uh, there you are. One thing for the experience that I want to do is, you see where it says experience plus 200? That'll be given to any character who's already on the battlefield. And I want to give that to my mages, because I'd like to get them up to level 5 there to unlock the Star Mage job class. So, hopefully, this will work out. See you on the other side, viewers. This one's going to take a little while. Okay, all the blue ones turn green. Uh, you want to make sure all your party members are off of any colored geo panels for this, obviously. Okay, there we go. See, it destroyed that one now. So we'll turn them all red. 
And now all the red ones will turn blue, and that'll destroy the Null Geo symbol. Yes! I think it's working! It's working! It's working! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think it'll actually max out the bonus gauge. Probably only like level 6 or 7. Oh well. It just wasn't big enough. Oh well. I'll take what I can get. Ooh, nice. Not bad. Not not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought we uh, weren't going to get that close, but okay. So, now, in order to move on from this floor of the dungeon, we need to actually, uh, well, kill the guy. Or get to the, either kill the last enemy, or get to the exit panel. In order to get the rewards from the bonus list, you have to kill all the enemies. You can't just uh, get to the exit panel to move on to the next floor. So, let's take out this guy. There we go. And we'll get most of our bonus goods. So this is a really good way of getting money and experience from the item world. Uh, I'm going to be using that money in order to well, buy new weapons that I'm going to be doing pretty soon here. So, okay. So let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, all my mages got up to level 7. All right. So that's pretty good. But can I make it all the way through to the 10th floor of the item world? Find out next time on Let's Play Disgaea. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day. And I'll explain more about how the item world actually works next time.